Welcome to Creative Tian Channel. Today I have another machine knitting project. I'm going to knit medium size woman's socks on the Brother 260 bulky knitting machine because I have a reaper for this machine. So I'm going to knit in the round and do the short rows and the ribbon on the machine. There are so many ways of doing socks. You can do the cuff down or from the toe up. For this project, I'm going to do a basic cuff down. Start with ribbon, hand half of them on the ribbon, and then do the circular knitting until the heel, and we'll do the short row, and then continue back to the circular knitting until the toes. And we can do another short row for the toes and then take it off the machine and do the Kitchener stitch to finish the seam. I'm going to use a sock way yarn. This one is on the seeker side of the sock yarn. And I will use the seeker type of yarn for the bulky knitting machine. Or you can use sports way yarn. That's a little bit seeker than the socks yarn. The reason I like the Brother 260 bulky machine is that I can see what I'm doing. It's much easier to manipulate because the needle is bigger and the space is bigger. So it's more enjoyable to knit. When I'm doing on the standard machine, it drops stitch easily because it's hard to see. It's hard to have a good control. For medium sized woman's socks, I have 41 stitches because when I use the R number, I can have both end stitches on the knitter and one stitch less for the ribber. So I'm starting with the ribbon and I want totally 41 stitches. I'm following the basic way of doing the one by one ribbon based on the instruction book. And the first thing is to make sure the pitch is correct. I have it on P3. So it's full pitch. And here is my needle arrangement. For the knitter, I have it from left 20 until right 21. That's every other needle. And on the knitter, it's in between. So I have it from left 19 until right 20. So you can see the needle are next to each other. So when it's knitting, the needles are not going to hit each other. And that's the setting at the beginning. It's just plain knitting with the tension dial to zero or the lowest one. On the river, it shows a star. That's a little bit lower than zero. Here is a star and they have this dial to two. The number two means it's a little bit tighter and later we can change to number one. And here is the knitter, it's just plain setting. And we can go back and forth a few times to arrange the needles. So now it's in the right position. And then we thread the yarn, put a clip in the bottom and knit our first row. It will be the zigzag row. And now we can start hanging the cast down comb and we have to do it from below and make sure it's evenly between all the zigzags. The next we have to hang weights. You will probably need a tool of the big weight and place it on the cast down comb evenly. Next we are going to need three salvage rows. Here is a setup. And we have the part on one side of the knitter and then part on the other side of the ribber. Now they increase the tension a little bit. So both are zero and zero. And then need three rows. So for the knitter, this is the partial knitting, the left side. And then for the ribber, the right side is partial. And I can change this to zero and we'll need three rows. That's our three row for cast down. Now we can set up the tension to the main part of the tension. 
that is usually higher than the cast on tension. But because I'm using a very thin yarn on the bulky, I will keep it tension zero. And now we return the partial knitting back to plain knitting before we start. To return the partial knitting to plain, you just hit this one, it says plain. For the reaper, you just return the PR back to N. And I keep the tension zero because I want it tighter on my sock way yarn. And now we can continue knitting back and forth and you should create one by one ribbing. And I want to return my tension back to zero so I know how many rows I need. and do it slowly and check the end stitch because sometimes it can get too loose. Now I need 20 rows and I'm going to transfer all stitches back to the knitter with my double eye needle and then we can move half of the stitch back to the reaper and continue our knitting. And to transfer stitch, you just need to move up the stitch all the way and then push it down all the way. Now the stitch is on the needle and then you transfer it to the empty stitch like that. It takes some practice, but it's not that hard. Now all stitches are transferred. The next step is to put half of the stitches to the reaper. And here is the center. I'm going to pick up the left stitches to the reaper. And there are many ways you can do that. I'll try to put it on a double point needle and then move it to the reaper. And the first I will drop down the reaper. and I have very thin circular needle. I'm just going to pick up all the stitch on this side. I'll start with the left side, it's easier. And push the needle out a little bit more. This is the tedious part. You can also put the stitches on the waist yarn and it'll be easier if you remove one of the weight so it's not too tight. Okay, now I have half of the stitch on the left side. I put away all the needle back to the non-working position. I'm going to take off the cast on comb first so I can fold it in half. Now that's a one by one ribbon. And now we can fold in half like that and place all the needles back to the reaper. It will be in between stitches. Now we are going to do circular knitting and based on the book, I have to set the pitch to edge three. So let me change the pitch to three here. The edge three is a half pitch. So when I pull the needle from the reaper, I have 20 needles here and those needles will be between the two neater needles, like that. And I think this is the most tedious part of knitting socks. I'm going to use transferring tool, the first stitch. Take it out and then place it onto the first needle. It seems easier to use a double eye needle. Pick up the stitch, take it off the left needle, place on the next needle. 
after the transfer I hang some weight and I can push the river back. Next we are going to set the partial knitting. For the knitter, the left side is the partial knit and for the river, the right side is the PR. And we set it to the main tension. For this lever, we turn it to one, so it's not too tight. And I want to set my main tension as zero on both, so I'm not changing that. And the partial knitting, the same as before, the left side and the right side here. And this one goes to left, the number one, so it's looser. Now we are ready to knit. And for the first row, we can push all the needles upward and make sure you have enough weight. Now we are ready to knit. I'm going to knit about 20 rows. And of course you can adjust the number. And I like to return the row counter to 000, zero, zero because each round needs two row. One pass only need one side. So 20 row will be 40 passes. Now I have 40 passes on the counter. I actually have 20 rows because it's circular row. Now we are ready to do the show row. Now we only need to work on the knitter. I'm going to change the arm back to this one for the knitter and then we'll drop down the river. I'm changing the setting back to the plane, so no more partial knitting. For the short row, I need to put the carriage to the holding position, the edge. The basic idea for short row is to have stitch down to one third. So I have 21 needles on the knitter, so one third will be seven. If you don't have exact three equal parts, you can make the middle part smaller or bigger and have two equal parts. I start with the carriage side, the first needle, push all the way to the E position, that's the holding position, and I will need one row. So this needle is not knitted, and we'll do the same on the left side push all the way out to the E, the holding position. And we'll repeat that until each side has seven needles out. And we want to make sure the center has enough weight. So I'm going to add more weight in the center. Now we finish the show row, the first part. Now we're going to do the reverse show row. The way I do it is just to wrap the first needle that's on this side near the carriage side. Push the needle back to the D position so the latch is slightly open and then we can continue. So that stitch is knitted back and the same on the other side. Wrap the first needle, this one, and push the needle back to the D position. Now the needle is knitted back and we continue doing the same until all needles are knitted back. It's very important to add more weight, so I'm going to add more weight from the back.
Now you can see it creates a pocket. Now we're done with show row. We are going to go back to circular knitting. So I'm going to change the connecting arm and connect to the rubber carriage. Now make sure we cancel the hole. Change back to plain knitting. No holding. Our next direction should be the rebar. So I'm going to have the normal knitting in this direction and the partial in this direction. And in the knitter, it will be the opposite. The left side will be partial knitting. I like to have the rebar needle all the way out so it's easy to knit the next row. Return the row counter to 000. zero, zero. And you can decide how many rows you want to knit between the toe show row and the heels. I have around six inches. According to my sample, I have about eight row per inch. So I will need about 48 rows. Two passes for one round, so you will be 96 passes. So I'll just keep knitting back and forth for 96 times. Before I knit, it's better to cross the stitches on the sides because it can create holes. And we'll do the same on the left side. Now we are ready to knit 96 passes. After 96 row, we are going to start the show row again. So I'm going to change the connecting arm to the knitter arm again, and we'll repeat the same show row for the toe. Now we can cancel the part, and we are going to start show row. So set the button to the holding position. We are going to show row down to seven stitches in the middle, and then reverse show row back. We start with the needle that's close to the carriage and pull it all the way out. Now we finish the show row, we are going to cross those two stitches, pick up the bump on the first stitch and place to the other side. And we'll do the same for the first stitch of the knitter. Pick it up and place to the first stitch of the knitter. So it's crossed here, you will reduce the hole. And the same on the left side. Now we can change it back to circular knitting. We'll push all the rebar needle up so it's easier to knit. And to set up the circular knitting, again, we need to do the partial. So the next row, I'm going to do the rebar. So I keep it normal on this side and partial on the other side. And we will do the opposite on the knitter, the partial on the right side, and cancel the hole. Now we are ready to knit circular rows. And we will just do one round of the circular row. So that will be two passes. And it's better to reduce one stitch in on both sides before we do the circular round. You can use a two-prong or three-prong transferring tool and uh, transfer the stitch, one stitch in. I'll start with the rebar side. It can be a little tricky, but it can be done. And we do the left side. It's easier to have latch open first. And we'll do the same on the neater side. And make sure the empty needle return to the non-working position. And now we are ready to knit one round. 
check the partial knitting button is correct and we'll need two rows. That's one wrong. Now we're pretty much done with the uh, socks. We just need to change to waist yarn, knit a few rows and take it off the machine. And before you cut the yarn, make sure you leave a tail so you can sew the Kitchener stitch. So that's what it looks like. Here is the cuff. We just have to sew up the seam. There's only one seam here. And here is the first show row. There will be still some holes, but we can sew it up from the inside. So it's not so obvious. And the last part is a show row for the toe. And we just need to do a Kitchener stitch. You can do it from inside out or do it the traditional way. Place it on two knitting needles and do the Kitchener. And then you have one sock down. I'm picking up the right leg of the V on a circular needle and then I will take off the waist yarn. I place the stitches on a circular needle and both sides have equal number of stitches. And now I can start to do the Kitchener stitch. Thank you for watching today's video. See you next time.